Good morning everyone from Chicago, Air Terminal 1, where today I'll be flying United Airlines' flagship aircraft, the Boeing 777-300ER, down to Orlando, Florida. Today my flight departs from Concourse C, which is a satellite concourse and can only be accessed by using the underground walkway. This walkway is best referred to as the Tunnel of Lights thanks to its iconic neon light show created in 1987 when the terminal first opened. The light show plays along to a slowed down version of Rhapsody in Blue, which is pretty much the United Airlines theme song. United is operating the 777-300ER on a once daily round trip between Chicago and Orlando this summer. Today just so happens to be the first day of scheduled 777-300ER service on this route. Today my flight departs from gate C10, which in my opinion is a terrible place to board a fully loaded Boeing 777. The gate area barely has any seats, so in most cases the crowd of waiting passengers spills out into the main hallway causing lots of congestion. Boarding was due to start at 8.11 a.m., but without any clear explanation, we ended up boarding over 30 minutes late. Overall, the entire boarding process was a huge mess. C-10 officially has just one jetway, but normally when a widebody aircraft uses the gate, the jetway from C-12 is also attached onto the aircraft. For some reason, on our flight today, we only used one jetway with just one gate agent. Considering this plane is completely full with all 350 passengers on board, you can imagine this took quite a while. United's Boeing 777-300ER contains 350 seats in a 3-class configuration. There are 60 seats in Polaris Business Class with a 121 configuration, 24 seats in Premium Plus with a 242 configuration, and 266 seats in Economy with a 343 configuration, 62 of those seats being designated as Economy Plus. My seat for this two hour flight down to Orlando is 55L, all the way in the back of the aircraft. Each economy class seat on this aircraft comes with a personal entertainment screen that lacks a remote control and thus can only be controlled by touching the screen. You will also find a USB port and headphone jack followed by a tray table which can be extended towards you. Below that is a decently large seat pocket in which you will find an air sickness bag, safety card, and a hemispheres magazine. This video was filmed on July 2nd, however the magazine you see here is the June 2021 issue. That's because United still had not updated the magazines yet at the time of this flight. Finally, the legroom in economy class is actually very generous, but I'll give more details on that later. Sanitizing wipes were handed out upon boarding, and once again, I had to use the wipe to clean parts of my seat that should have already been clean. Granted, the aircraft was clean for the most part, however, there were some spots that were missed by the cleaning crew, such as the tray table and seat pocket. My tray table was littered with crumbs and I found the towel that wrapper from the previous flight still lodged in the side of my seat pocket. Now these are very minor issues to complain about, yes I totally agree, and it's not these cleanliness issues that bother me. What does bother me is just how much United promotes their Clean Plus initiative, which they claim delivers quote unquote industry leading cleanliness. What? Unfortunately this is a recurring problem with flying during the pandemic. Airlines can boast all they want about their deep cleaning procedures, but will you actually get a clean plane and seat is a totally different story.
U.S. legacy carriers all have excellent in-flight entertainment systems, and of course, United Airlines is included in that list. The IFE system on the 777 is spectacular. The screen responds perfectly, and in terms of content, the system contains hundreds of content options across many different languages. There are also games on offer and a dedicated section for kids, but one very unique feature to United's IFE system lies in the audio section. United is the only airline that I know of to feature live ATC on their planes, which allows you to hear the communications between the pilots and air traffic control. Another neat feature of the IFE is that you can read the latest news articles across many different genres, that too in various different languages. You can also check the weather of your destination and surrounding areas, and of course you can track your flight's progress through the in-flight map. United's in-flight maps are interactive, and while they don't offer as many viewing options as the ones you find on American or Delta, they are very detailed. On the 777-300ER, you'll find individual air nozzles and reading lights above your seat. Because there are no physical buttons like you'd normally expect, the light controls and flight attendant call buttons are actually located on the IFE screen. This is just like what Delta has on their IFE, which I reviewed back in April. Wi-Fi is available on this flight, however, because the IFE is so good, I didn't bother using it. Universal power outlets are also available, however, they are located in between seats. This means that for a row of three seats, you only get two outlets. Snack service on today's flight consisted of a plastic bag containing a packet of pretzels, Biscoff cookies, and a bottle of water. To my surprise, there was actually a separate drink service following the snack bags. I ended up asking for some more water, and was instead given another snack bag, which I take as a win-win. Now more on the seat, I've heard many complaints about the 777's 343 layout in economy, primarily regarding how supposedly narrow and tight the seats are. But in all honesty, I found this seat to be very, very comfortable, especially being 5 feet 11 inches. The legroom was fantastic, and the seat didn't feel super tight either. The only other U.S. carrier operating the 777-300ER is American Airlines, who also claim this aircraft as their flagship. I flew American's 777-300ER twice back in 2019, and in all honesty, I found the hard product on United's 777-300ER to be slightly better than that of American's. We had a nice 80 mile per hour tailwind pushing us south this morning, therefore the flight went by pretty fast. Before I knew it, we were already crossing the border into Florida and soon after beginning the descent into Orlando. Today we will be landing on runway 18 right, and because we're approaching from the north, the entire approach was pretty simple. We first made one sharp left turn for the base leg, then one final right turn for a straight in landing onto 18 right at MCO.
Welcome to Orlando. The local time is 12.34. You may continue to use and charge your phones and other small devices. If you're sitting, please remain comfortably seated until we call your road number to the plane. Thank you for your cooperation in keeping your fellow passengers safe. Please check your seatbelt. As we taxi to the gate, it's time to summarize the experience with United today. This was my first time flying on board United's 777-300ER, and I was quite pleasantly surprised. I initially came in expecting the seat to be tight and uncomfortable, judging off what I had heard from multiple reviews, but as you saw, I got the exact opposite. Aside from the seat, the crew was great, the in-flight service and entertainment were excellent, and despite our late departure from Chicago, we managed to land in Orlando a few minutes early. The only two things I did not enjoy today was of course the unorganized and delayed boarding process, and furthermore how dirty parts of the seat were when I first boarded the aircraft. Otherwise, it was a great flight, and I can truly say with full confidence that United's 777-300ER is an awesome flagship aircraft. For those wondering why United is operating this huge plane on such a short route, it comes down to two main reasons. The first is that due to the pandemic, the vast majority of United's long-haul passenger network remains suspended, so as such they have a huge surplus of wide-body aircraft left over for use elsewhere. Furthermore, domestic travel within the US has been surging this summer, especially to Orlando with all of its attractions. Therefore, in order to meet this huge rise in demand, United, American, and Delta have all been operating wide-body aircraft on select routes to Orlando, mainly just for the summer season. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss any new videos. I'll be in Orlando for about two days before flying another United 777 back to Chicago, but this time in Premium Plus, so don't miss out on that exciting review coming next week. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this video and comment below with anything you'd like to share. That's all I have for now. Take it easy, everyone, and I will see you in the next one.